Well, <coughs> good morning, and as the uh, slide said, uh, happy Mother's Day to uh, all the uh, ladies in the parish, uh, uh, all who are uh, mothers physically and also uh, mothers in the faith, mothers spiritually. It's a privilege and an honor to share this day with you and to uh, be able to express our appreciation uh, throughout our service today. Let's begin by bowing our heads in prayer together. Let's pray. Our loving God, thank you so much for the privilege of gathering together. Uh, thank you so much for the gift of mothers uh, and all that they mean in, in the, the world. Lord, uh, we pray that this service would be a celebration of the love that you uh, have given us uh, true mothers. We pray that it will affirm uh, the, all mothers in this ministry and that it will unite us, Lord, all of us, in your love, strengthen us to reach out and serve in your name. We pray all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Our um, opening hymn is one where we acknowledge that we are gathering uh, together, uh, uh, so uh, wherever we may be physically uh, now, and so it's appropriate that we say, come in and sit down. Obviously, you're not sitting down physically, but we are uh, united in heart as we share worship together. And so as part of the family, spread far and wide, Let's sing our opening hymn together. to follow along the uh, written order of service for today. Uh, it's available 
in the sermon section of our website. And we continue with the Easter greeting that we have shared throughout this Easter season. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. May his grace and peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with joy. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we <clears throat> offer forth our praise. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We say together the collect of the day. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you riches beyond imagination. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And at this time, we have our children's time, and uh, we are blessed today to have Keith and Megan, uh, who are going to share with us a, a classic story about a baby bird's search for its mother. Hi everyone, it's and happy Mother's Day. Hopefully you've been busy um, taking care of mom today, uh, making breakfast, household cleaning up for, um, doing special, special things. We thought we'd share with you um, one of uh, uh, my wife and our and, uh, boys' mom's favorite stories, we still like to read with, uh, with everyone, and this is entitled, Are You My Mom? by P.D. Easton. A mother bird sat on her egg. The egg jumped. Uh oh, said the mother bird. My baby will be here. He will want to eat. I must get something for my baby bird to eat, she said. I will be back. So away she went. The egg jumped. It jumped and jumped and jumped. Out came the baby bird. The 
baby bird could not fly. He could not fly, but he couldn't walk. Now I will go and find my mother, he said. He did not know what his mother looked like. He went right by her. He did not see her. He came to a kitten. Are you my mother? He said to the kitten. The kitten just looked and looked. It did not say a thing. The kitten was not his mother, so he went on. Then he came to a hen. Are you my mother? He said to the hen. No, said the hen. The kitten was not his mother. The hen was not his mother. So the baby bird went on. I have to find my mother, he said. But where? Where is she? Where could she be? And then it came to a dog. Are you my mother, he said to the dog? I am not your mother. I am a dog, said the dog. The kitten was not his mother. The hen was not his mother. The dog was not his mother. So the baby bird went on. Now he came to a cow. Are you my mother? He said to the cow. How can I be your mother? said the cow. Ah. Cow. The kitten and the hen were not his mother. The dog and the cow were not his mother. Did he have a mother? I did have a mother, said the baby bird. I know I did. I have to find her. I will. I will. Now the baby bird did not walk, he ran. Then he saw a car. Could that old thing be his mother? No, it could not. The baby bird did not stop. He ran on and on. Now he looked way down. He saw a boat. There she is, said the baby bird. He called to the boat. But the boat did not stop. The boat went on. He looked way, way up. He saw a big plane. Here I am, mother, he called out. But the plane did not stop. The plane went on. Just then, the baby bird saw a big thing. This must be his mother. There she is, he said. There is my mother. He ran right up to her. Mother, mother, here I am, mother, he said to the big thing. But the big thing just said, snort.
Just then, the snort came to a stop. Where am I, said the baby bird? I want to go home. I want my mother. Then something happened. The snort put that baby bird right back in the tree. The baby bird was home. Just then, the mother bird came back to the tree. Do you know who I am? She said to her baby. Yes. I know who you are, said the baby bird. You are not a kitten. You are not a hen. You are not a dog. You are not a cat. You are not a boat, or a plane, or a snort. You are a bird, and you are my mother. And, uh... We celebrate the, the love uh, of mothers today, and, and uh, we remember uh, how uh, the Lord loves each one of us, and each of us are in that same kind of quest, uh, seeking uh, to find the one who loves us that much. At this time, we have our canticle, and our canticle is uh, actually speaking about that love which has sought us out and which saves us. Uh, this one is the uh, canticle 20, the song of Simeon or Nunc Dibetis. And uh, we'll say this together now. I invite you to say the parts that are in the yellow, bold italic. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. And now uh, John will share the first reading from Holy Scripture. Today's reading is Acts 10.44-10.48. While Peter was speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Can anyone keep these people from being baptized with water? They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then he asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now sing about the love of our Lord binding us together. Not the words are on our screens. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with hearts that cannot be broken. Oh, 
Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, in the order of service, it says uh, reflection. And really, this is a, now a reflection time as... Uh, we are going to have a video that we're going to watch in just a moment. Uh, then we have six different reflections from six uh, uh, ladies in our congregation, six uh, reflections, and then after that I'll, I'll share a, a, a brief reflection on our scripture passages today. So we'll begin our reflection time with a video entitled, An Almost Post-Pandemic Mother's Day.
we have, uh, as I said, six different reflections now. The first one uh, is uh, shared by Rhonda, and it's entitled, Running Away. Running Away by Lois Kruger. On a very hectic day when my husband and I were busy going in a hundred directions, our four and a half year old son, Justin Carl, had to be reprimanded for getting into mischief. After several attempts, my husband George finally told him to stand in the corner. He was very quiet but wasn't too happy about it. Finally, after a few moments, he said, I'm going to run away from home. My first reaction was surprise, and his words angered me. You are? I blurted. But as I turned to look at him, he looked like an angel, so little, so innocent, with his face so sad. As my heart felt his pain, I remembered a moment in my own childhood when I spoke those words and how unloved and lonely I felt. He was saying so much more than just his words. He was crying from within. Don't you dare ignore me. Please notice me. I'm important too. Please make me feel wanted, unconditionally loved and needed. Okay, Jesse, you can run away from home, I tenderly whispered as I started picking out clothes. Well, we'll need PJs, your coat. Mama, he said, what are you doing? We'll also need my coat and nightgown. I packed these items into a bag and placed them by the front door. Okay, Jesse, are you sure you want to run away from home? Yeah, but where are you going? Well, if you're going to run away from home, then Mama's going with you, because I would never want you to be alone. I love you too much, Justin Carl. We held each other while we talked. Why do you want to come with me? I looked into his eyes. Because I love you, Justin, my life would never be the same if you went away, so I want to make sure you'll be safe. If you do go, I will go with you. Can Daddy come? No, Daddy has to stay home with your brothers, Erickson and Trevor, and Daddy has to work and take care of the house while we're gone. Can Freddy, the hamster, come? No, Freddy has to stay here too. He thought for a while and said, Mama, can we stay home? Yes, Justin, we can stay home. Mama? Yes, Justin, I love you. I love you too, honey. How about you help me make some popcorn? All right. In that moment, I knew the wondrous gift of motherhood I had been given, that the sacred responsibilities to help develop a child's sense of security and self-esteem are nothing, nothing to be taken lightly. I realized that in my arms I held the precious gift of childhood, a beautiful piece of clay willing and wanting to be cuddled and magnificently molded into a confident adult masterpiece. I learned that as a mother I should never run away from the opportunity to show my children they are wanted, important, lovable, and the most precious gift from God. On our uh theme there uh, uh, talks about how uh, sometimes things can get a little crazy and certainly uh, with the school sometimes now uh, being uh, uh, from home uh, the next couple of ones to, uh, quotes talk about that uh, and uh, the first one is uh, a collection of things mum would never say uh, and Deborah is going to share those with us How on earth can you see the TV sitting so far back? Yeah, I didn't used to bother with homework either. Just leave all the lights on. It makes the house look more cheery. Let me smell lectured. Yeah, it's good for another week. Go ahead and keep that straight dog, honey. I'll be glad to feed and walk it every day. Well, if Timmy's mom says it's okay, that's good enough for me. Don't 
Don't worry about picking up your clothes. I appreciate the opportunity to have some extra exercise. I don't have a tissue with me. Just use your sleeve. Don't bother wearing a jacket. The wind chill is bound to improve. And uh, speaking about Picking up things, that's the title of our next reflection, which Gloria is going to share with us. Picking up things. Ms. Jones had just given her second grade students a science lesson. She had explained about magnets and showed how they would pick up nails and other bits of iron. Now it was question time. Ms. Jones said, my name begins with the letter M, and I pick up things. What am I? A little boy in the front row probably said, you're a mother. And our next reflection talks about how being a mother will change your life and uh, Robbie's going to share this one with us. It Will Change Your Life by Dale Hansen Gordon. Time is running out for my friend. We are sitting at lunch when she casually mentions that she and her husband are thinking of starting a family. What she means is that her biological clock has begun this countdown, and she is considering the prospect of motherhood. We're taking the survey, she says, half joking. Do you think I should have a baby? It will change your life, I say carefully, keeping my tone neutral. I know, she says, no more sleeping in on Saturdays, no more spontaneous vacations. But that's not what I mean at all. I look at my friend, trying to decide what to tell her. I want her to know what she will never learn in childbirth classes. I want to tell her that the physical wounds of childbirth heal, but that becoming a mother will leave her with an emotional wound so raw that she will forever be vulnerable. I consider warning her that she will never read a newspaper again without asking, what if that had been my child? That every plane crash, every fire will haunt her. That when she sees pictures of starving children, she will wonder if anything could be worse than watching a child die. I look at her carefully manicured nails and stylish suit and think she should know that no matter how sophisticated she is, becoming a mother will immediately reduce her to the primitive level of a bear protecting her cup. That an urgent call of mom will cause her to drop a souffle or her best crystal without a moment's hesitation. I want my friend to know that everyday routine decisions will no longer be routine. That a five-year-old boy's desire to go to the men's room rather than the women's room at McDonald's will become a major dilemma. That right there in the midst of clattering trays and screaming children Issues of independence and gender identity will be weighed against the prospect that a child molester may be lurking in the restroom. However decisive she may be at the office, she will second guess herself constantly as a mother. Looking at my attractive friend, I want to assure her that eventually she will shed the pounds of pregnancy, but she will never feel the same about herself. That her life, now so important, will be of less value to her once she has a child that she would give it up in a moment to save her offspring, but will also begin to hope for more years, not to accomplish her own dreams, but to watch her child accomplish theirs. I want her to know that a cesarean scar or stretch marks will become badges of honor. My friend's relationship with her husband will change, but not in the way she thinks. I wish she could understand how much more you can love a man who is always careful to cover the baby or never hesitate to play with his son or daughter. I think she should know that she will fall in love with her husband again for reasons she would now find very unromantic. I wish my friend could sense the bond she will feel with other women throughout history who have tried desperately to stop war and prejudice and drunk driving. I hope she will understand why I can think rationally about most issues but become temporarily insane when I discuss the threat of nuclear war to my children's future. I want to describe to my friend the exhilaration of seeing your son learn to hit a baseball. 
I want to capture for her the belly lock of a baby who is touching the soft fur of a dog for the first time. I want her to taste the joy that is so real that hurts. My friend's quizzical look makes me realize that tears took form in my eyes. You'll never regret it, I finally say. Then I reach across the table, squeeze my friend's hand, and offer a prayer for her and me and all the mere mortal women who stumble their way into this holiest of callings. In the midst of the uh, challenges we faced this past year, um, there's uh, a quote that I uh, especially like uh, that celebrates the gift of life that uh, mothers uh, are able to share with their uh, children. And uh, this one is called Mother's Song, <clears throat> and uh, Dinah is going to share it for us. A mother's song. My little unborn child, I carry you without your yes or no to life and light. Would you consent, I wonder, to be born if you could choose and know each grief, each plight we all endure who walk a mortal road? Would you consent to share the human load? I think you would. You are so close, so close these many months to one rejoicing heart. You cannot help but feel how strong, how sweet a joy can be, and long to claim your part in such a heritage, which life bestows to more than compensate for all the woes. I know you would, for I can promise you the wonder of the stars, the seas, the hills, the miracle of love and comradeship, the breathless sum of loveliness which fills our world. O oh, small new soul that looks towards birth, I bring to you a good, a glorious earth. Our final uh, reflection is one that is specifically written about uh, COVID-19 and our experience in these past 14 months. Uh, and it's uh, written by a mother of five, uh, and it's shared for us today by Doreen. When this is over, may we never again take for granted a handshake with a stranger Full shelves at the store, conversations with neighbours, a crowded theatre, Friday night out, the taste of communion, a routine checkup, the school rush each morning, coffee with a friend, stadium roaring, each deep breath, a boring Tuesday. Life itself. When this ends, may we find that we have become more like the people we wanted to be. We were called to be. We hoped to be. And may we stay that way. Better for each other because of the worst. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be now and ever acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I want to spend the next uh, couple of minutes uh, reflecting <coughs> on our uh, passages of scripture appointed by the lectionary for today, uh, the sixth Sunday of Easter. And uh, <clears throat> as often seems to be the case uh, with the lectionary, uh, uh, it just seems like uh, with the Lord's hand is in it, and, and these word uh, passages are, are very appropriate for Mother's Day, because they are indeed all about love. First, uh, God's 
love for us. In our gospel, Jesus says, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Think of this. Jesus loves us as much as the Father loves him. Then he says, no one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends and adds, you are my friends. Jesus lays down his life for us. The Apostle Paul writes in Galatians chapter 2, The life I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Jesus laid down his life for us. He gave himself completely to us. We are that precious to him. And so the sacrificial love of a mother for her child gives us insight into the love God has for us. God loves us as a mother loves her child. So first, God's love for us. Second, God's love through us. Both readings remind us that we are called to love one another. This is my commandment, Jesus says in John chapter 15, that you love one another as I have loved you. And he concludes in verse 17 by saying, I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is Jesus' bottom line, to lay down our lives for one another. And again, we have the example of mothers of what this looks like in daily life. And that's why, uh, even though uh, we might chuckle at the kitten on the head and things like that, uh, and the craziness that is depicted in the image on our screens, um, we know that laying down our life often looks like that. It's the little things, day by day, uh, that we do. Little things that are not so little, and that add up, and are so, so important. The source of this love is God. Jesus says, I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. The use of fruit reminds us of what Jesus taught earlier in chapter 15, uh, which we looked at last Sunday, that as we abide in Jesus the vine, we have his life coursing through us, and we bear the fruit of love in our lives. God loves through us, so that we love one another as a mother loves her child. And of course, it has been a tremendous challenge for mothers these past 14 months, laying down our lives in so many different ways, as our screen theme reminds us, for example, with children often being at home uh, for schooling. being called to keep loving way beyond our comfort zone. And it's good at times like this to remember that it has always been this way, that we as disciples are called to keep loving, to stay connected to the source of all love, and thus uh, be able to keep loving, even when the challenges are great, are, are beyond us in our own ability, our own strength. The saying is true, the darker the night, the greater the light shines. This past week, I've been uh, reading Dutch Christian Eddie Hillesum's letters from Vesterbork, which she wrote in 1943 at the age of 29, while in a detention camp waiting to be transported to Auschwitz. In one of the final letters, she includes the following prayer. You have made me so rich, O God. Please let me share out your beauty with open hands. My life has become an uninterrupted dialogue with you, O God, one great dialogue. Sometimes when I stand in some corner of the camp, my feet planted on your earth, my eyes raised toward your heaven. 
Tears sometimes run down my face, tears of deep emotion and gratitude. My life is one great dialogue with you. I may never become the great artist I would like to be, but I am already secure in you, God. Sometimes I try my hand at turning out small profundities and uncertain short stories, but I always end up with just one single word, God. And that says everything. And there is no need for anything more. The beat of my heart has grown deeper, more active, and yet more peaceful. It is as if I were all the time storing up inner riches. Etty died in Auschwitz three months after writing these words. Elsewhere, she said, there must be someone to live through it all and bear witness to the fact that God lived, even in these times. And why should I not be that witness? These past 14 months, Christian mothers and mothers in the faith have asked this question. They've stayed connected to the God of love and borne witness to the fact that God is alive in these times. To a world that desperately needs hope and encouragement to believe that this is so. Mothers have borne fruit that will last in the lives of their children, grandchildren. And the scope of our love needs to be as wide as God's, as wide as Jesus' open arms on the cross, reaching out to all God's beloved children. In our passage from Acts, Peter and the others learned that God didn't exclude Gentiles from being part of the family. And so they decided that they wouldn't either. Can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have, Peter asks? No. And why would we want to try? God's love is meant for all to share. Our opening hymn today says, come, come in, come in and sit down. You are part of the family. Not if you're rich or strong or have it all together or have the same views, etc. Sarah Miles, in her book, Jesus Freak, writes, that first baptism in the Jordan, so that's Jesus' baptism, that first baptism in the Jordan will lead to baptisms of fire, tears, the cup, and the cross. Jesus will submit to it all, and he will never, ever let his lovers go. Jesus sees us face to face, and what he sees about us, his confused, doubting, selfish followers, is that we too are beloved children of God. We are one flesh with him and with all humankind. We, all of us, are part of the family. As precious members of God's family, May we all abide in God's love and be channels of it to others as mothers, fathers, mothers and fathers in the faith, making a life-changing difference in our homes, neighborhoods, communities, and world. We have a special Mother's Day affirmation of faith today, and I invite us now to say it together. We believe in God, creator and sustainer of all that lives, the one in whose image all are made, the one who kept covenant with Sarah and Abraham and never forgot Hagar, answered Hannah's deepest prayer, gave songs to Miriam, Deborah, and Mary, the one who loves, hears, and sings over us still today. We believe in Jesus Christ, Redeemer and Savior of all who believe, the one who loved 
Martha and Mary, the one who fed the crowds, healed the woman who bled, raised Jairus' daughter and Lazarus, the one whose love, life, death, and rising recreates us still today. We believe in the Spirit, comforter and interpreter for all who cry out, the one who came in fire and wind, the one who gave courage to Esther, caused David to dance, and made John leap in Elizabeth's womb, the one who breathes life into the world still today. We believe that the body of Christ is made up of hands large and small, hearts old and young, legs strong and weak, and feet made beautiful as they carry the good news to the nations. And now this time we are entering into a special time of prayer and we will have Brian leading us in our prayers of the people and we begin with a Mother's Day litany. The prayers of the people, Mother's Day litany. Loving and nurturing God, we thank you for mothers, for, for all they mean or have meant to us. We thank you for the love they have shown and the care that they have given. For the, the many times they gave us hugs and held us, held us close. Loving and nurturing God, we thank you for the qualities of mothers, for their patience, their kindness, concern and understanding, in so many ways reflecting who you are. We thank, thank you for, for the part they play in our lives, lives and for this special day of saying, saying thank, thank you to, to them. Loving and nurturing God, we thank you for the wonder of your mothering. As a mother protects her children, you watch over us day by day. We thank you for your arms which always encircle and protect us, your hands shield and deliver us from harm. Loving God, we pray for those for whom Mother's Day brings heartache rather than in celebration. We pray for those who have challenging relationships with their mothers, who have never known their mothers, or whose mothers have died. We, we thank, thank you for your mothering heart and your tender love, love which gives give us the strength, strength to forgive, heal our wounds, wounds and nurture all who feel abandoned or lost. We wait with those who long to be mothers, but as yet have not had their own children. We grieve with those who ache because they will never be mothers. We thank you for their mothering hearts, which long to be expressed. Lord, in your mercy, mother us all with your love. We pray for those who embrace the ministry of mentoring others as spiritual mothers. We lift up all who are seeking to respond to the call to hold all the world's children in their hearts. We thank you that you enlarge our hearts and equip us to serve others in your strength. Lord, in your mercy, mother us all with your love. May all of us have the comfort of knowing that your mothering love is constant, your understanding is perfect, and your compassion is never ending. We thank you that you give birth to all of us with delight and joy. Lord, in your mercy, mother us all with your love. Amen. Protect those. Physical, emotional, 
psychological, economic, and spiritual well-being, and move each of our hearts to act on the ways you have us to partner the answers to this prayer. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. my prayer in response to COVID-19. God, creator of the world and all humankind, have mercy on us, the people from all nations of the world. We are all affected by COVID-19, yet the burdens are unequally shared. Some have access to vaccination and health care, while others are told to wait. Some earn more money than ever, Others lose their last coin. Some find comfort in a caring environment, while others are far away from home, lonely, exploited, and neglected. Jesus, would live here, we urgently need you. You are in solidarity with those who are most affected by the many negative consequences of COVID-19. You are sick. You are homeless. You are a stranger. You are exploited. You are dying. Your love is universal. We separate. We neglect. We forget. You unite. Your compassion embraces all creation. You remember everyone. Because your sacrifice there is life. Life stronger than death. Holy Spirit, transforming and renewing power. Teach, Teach us to interconnect with one another. Only when, when we are all vaccinated, the pandemic is over. And when we are all fed and safe, we together will celebrate life in abundance. Inspire us to share God's love so that, so that the world will be filled with mercy and joy. Empower us to be Christ's hands and feet to reach out to neighbors and strangers. God, creator, healer, Transformer, in you is hope for all the world, to you be the glory. We take a moment in silent prayer to lift up all who are especially on our hearts today. Now, let us remember before God our selfish ways, the things we have done wrong, the sorrows we have caused, the love we have not shown. Most merciful Father, forgive us our sins against you and against each other. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may live in love as you would have us live, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God has spoken peace into our hearts, and so we have that gift of peace to share with each other. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And wherever we may be, let's greet one another with the peace of Christ. Now, at this time, we pause to offer to the Lord our time, talents, and treasure as we... Uh, say, uh, we remember that the gifts that we have been given are gifts to be shared. In our parish family, one way that we share our treasure is uh, through the offerings that we give to St. Paul's. And uh, thank you so much to everybody who is uh, continuing to give financially to St. Paul's to help us 
to carry out uh, the mission that God has given us of spreading God's love through our words and our deeds. Now, at this time, we'll listen to a hymn of thanks to God, uh, who from our mother's arms hath blessed us on our way, played on the organ at All Saints Church in Oystermouth, Swansea, Wales. And uh, while we're listening to that, our screen will show a slide that mentions ways that we can participate in our mission by sharing our support. Now let's say together the prayer over the gifts. God of glory, accept all we offer you this day and bring us to that eternal city of love and light where Christ is King. We ask this in his name. Amen. The words for our Eucharistic prayer are on our screen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, for the gift of a world full of wonder and for our life which comes from you. By your power you sustain the universe. Glory to you forever and ever. You created us <clears throat> to love you with all our heart and to love each other as ourselves, but we rebel against you by the evil that we do. In Jesus, your Son, you bring healing to our world and gather us into one great family. Therefore, with all who serve you on earth and in heaven, we praise your wonderful name as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you thanks and praise, loving Father, because in sending Jesus, your Son, to us, you showed us how much you love us. He cares for the poor and the hungry. He suffers with the sick and the rejected. Betrayed and forsaken, he did not strike back, but overcame hatred with love. On the cross, 
he defeated the power of sin and death. By raising him from the dead, you show us the power of your love to bring new life to all your people. Glory to you forever and ever. On the night before he gave up his life for us, Jesus at supper with his friends took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which is shed for you and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Glory to you forever and ever. Gracious God, with this bread and wine, we celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus, and we offer ourselves to you in him. Send your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts, that we may know the presence of Jesus in the breaking of bread and share in the life of the family of your children. Glory to you forever and ever. Father, you call us to be your servants. Fill us with the courage and love of Jesus, that all the world may gather in joy at the table of your kingdom. We sing your praise, almighty Father, through Jesus our Lord, in the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Glory to you forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, we died with you on the cross. Now we are raised to new life. We were buried in your tomb. Now we share in your resurrection. Live in us that we may live in you. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. At St. Paul's, we have the opportunity to partake of communion physically as well as spiritually. Uh, consecrated wafers, each infused with drops of wine, can be picked up on Saturdays between 2 and 2.45, or by appointment uh, from a table just inside the main entrance. And uh, you may be able to see in front of the altar there in individual paper cups uh, and covered with a sealed baggie to make them safe for everybody. And uh, we recommend that you hold on to the wafer and partake physically during communion time uh, at this exact uh, moment of the service. 
All of us, whether or not we're partaking physically of the bread and wine today, have the opportunity to feed on our Lord in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And so I invite us all to say the prayer for communion on our screens together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Now let's say together the prayer after communion. Father, you restored us to life by raising your Son from death. May we who receive this sacrament always be strengthened to do your will. In the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Our closing hymn speaks about uh, us sharing uh, the embrace of, of God and how the circle gets wider and wider. The words are on our screen. the circle wide, draw it wider still, let us be a song, no one stands alone, standing side by side, draw the circle wide, draw the still point of the circle, round whom all creation turns, nothing lost but hell forever, in God's gracious
everybody's invited to join our post-service virtual coffee time uh, via Zoom. The slide on our screen shows how uh, to get the link that you'll need to do this. And it would be uh, wonderful to share uh, this uh, Mother's Day uh, fellowship with you today. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. And just to mention uh, before we go that uh, we do have uh, uh, carnations uh, still available for pickup. If you uh, would uh, like a carnation, please phone very quickly because we are planning uh, this afternoon to give any that are left over uh, to Sundance on the Green.